You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Welcome to another Nerd Stalker interview. Uh, good morning. This is Greg Laurie, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Uh, today we're at the 2014 uh, Casual Connect Conference, uh, which is, you know, in a lot of game circles, it's uh, second to GDC in this town, but um, it's still pretty relevant. So I'm pleased to talk with uh, representatives of Eline Media, uh, Upper One Games, uh, Sean v Veshi. Hi, how you doing? Here, and uh, Amy uh, Friedin. Um, and uh, they're going to talk a little bit more about this game, uh, uh, Never Alone. So it's going to be a really kind of cool interview, I think. So a little bit about Sean. Um, he's an award-winning director and designer in the video game industry, serving in key creative and leadership roles at Activision, Microsoft, uh, Eidos, um, and uh, other uh, prominent uh, places. Yeah. And, uh, and currently, he's the creative director at Eline Media. And Amy is a chief financial officer at Eline Media. And Amy also currently serves as the executive vice president uh, and a CFO of a Cook Inlet uh, Tribal Council, CITC they call it, uh, an innovative uh, nonprofit that uh, provides educational and social services uh, to Alaska Natives and American Indian people uh, uh, in the Cook Inlet region, right, in Alaska. So she's good with money. <laughs> and uh, I think they may, any game needs that. So um, <laughs> anyway, good morning, Sean and Amy. Welcome to, thanks for joining us here for Nerd Stalker. So, yeah, thanks oh, for having us. Oh, no problem. Um, do you want to add anything about yourselves that I missed? No, you did a great job. Um, uh, this is, I'm, I'm glad that you took an interest in this project. It's been a really special project for us. We've had a lot of fun, had a lot of learning, and uh, we're making a great game, so it's great to be able to talk okay. about it. No, I echo Sean's thoughts. I think that this has been a phenomenal project and the thing that we have to share is this beautiful game that's going to be a huge invitation to the world to come explore the Nupiat culture. Yeah, and um, you know, we'll go ahead and get into that because I think uh, uh, you, when I look at a lot of the branding for this, this game and everything, it's, it, you're calling it a world game, which is kind of interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a different kind of take on, on uh, you know, instead of an international game, it's called a world game. So it, it you know, probably tells the stories, which is, you know, around the world um, you could connect with. So um, so anyway, let's jump in and talk about uh, this new interesting game called uh, Never Alone. So Never Alone was inspired by the rich culture and folklore of the Inupiat uh, people of the Arctic. And uh, sorry if I butchered that, but I, I, <laughs> I you know. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. And so, so what is the folklore story behind uh, Never Alone? So Never Alone is based on a traditional Nupiak story called Kanuk Sayuka, and that provides the spine of the game, and it really weaves in other traditional stories from the Nupiak culture, yeah. which is in the kind of northern region of Alaska, and it just provides this beautiful baseline for the story to be built off of. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, so, like, uh, what inspired you to, to do this? I mean, you know, I mean... I could see making a movie, which is kind of cool, or, or a uh, animation feature out of this, but you know what, maybe turn this into a game. You know, this really started with a conversation around a lunch table one day at Cook and the Tribal Council. So CITC is a social service tribal organization. We serve about 11,000 Alaska Native American Indian people every year, and we were just thinking about you know, what's going to be coming next for our organization? What do we need to do? We have a huge youth population coming up in the Alaska Native, um, you know, population. And a lot of people are moving into the Cook Inlet region, which is where Anchorage is located. And so we wanted to find a way to connect with our youth in a way that was meaningful and also to put a really positive image out there in the community. A lot of times, you know, there's so many harsh statistics around Alaska Natives, you know, less than 50% of our youth are graduating from high school in the Anchorage school district were twice as likely to commit suicide so there's all these negative things out there you know that really don't show the potential of our people and what we wanted to do was work in a medium that was going to resonate with our youth and then gave them this great thing to like grasp onto and say hey look we're just as cool as everyone else so um, after that lunch we just went out and found the best people we could to work with and that's how we partnered with Eline and I don't know if you want to talk about that first uh, meeting you had with yeah. Gloria O'Neill at Cook and the Tribal Council. Yeah, we, I had the opportunity to meet with Gloria. She really um, uh, was the genesis of the vision for this, and she posed a number of uh, interesting questions to us. And as a game developer, I've worked for many years on action games, and they tend to be from fictional universes. She said, uh, she asked whether games could be used to pass uh, wisdom from one generation to the next, uh, whether games could be used to share and extend world culture. And so these are really powerful questions that um, got us thinking. 
uh, when Amy and Gloria sent a box of books that were transcriptions of uh, original uh, Nupiak legends, we were just uh, astounded by the rich uh, tapestry those, those tales told, the characters, the worlds, the settings, and we thought it was a perfect mapping into games. Wow. So, uh, wow. So, now you, 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 I think you, you touch on something that I'd like to kind of a little bit expand on, Amy. Is that you know a lot of uh, you know it isn't just the American Indian cultures. There's a lot of uh, cultures around the United States because we're a melting pot. Mm -hmm. A lot of things, and a lot of these local communities are struggling with the same issues you guys are. Is um, how do you bring up the young as the new leaders of the organization? I think that's one that comes yeah. to mind. In the Japanese community, it's the same way. Yeah. Japanese American community here is the same way. And, and secondly, how do you provide a source of funding <laughs> into it? to make it work, right? That's correct. And, you know, that's one of the most important things we had moving forward is connecting with our youth. But at the same time, we couldn't afford as a nonprofit just to do something that broke even. We needed something that was going to make a positive impact to our bottom line as well as a positive impact in the community. And I think one of the things that is so powerful about what we're doing with this video game is it sets the bar really high for these type of projects. So it's not an appropriation of the culture. And honestly, I was nervous when we started because being a Nupiak, I was worried that this is going to be an appropriation of my culture. It was going to show up on screen, you know, in kind of a way that wasn't, didn't really share the values of the Alaska Native culture. But once we started seeing the concept art and seeing it come alive on screen, I knew it was just a new way of storytelling for people. If you think about the cultures around the world, and this is the same for the Nupiak and Alaska Native people, there's so many ways to tell our stories from oral traditions from dance to drawings to you know for Alaska Native scrimshot and movies and the video game is just this really great way to have a hands-on experience and you're hearing the story through the video game but you're in control and you're embedded in it so it's like reminds me of when I heard these stories growing up you know pictures were going through my mind and now I'm seeing them come to life on screen and yeah, you just got me thinking about exactly how how culture can be really taught to other people, other people, and, and you know, and it's, it's if they're open, right? So I think that's part of the thing is people have to be open. So so let's get into the yeah. the, the, the game, yeah. uh, Never Alone. Um, so Sean, you know, why don't you talk about kind of the genesis of the development and, and how it was to work with the uh, you know the Cook Indian tribes and sure. um, you know and and you know how how maybe your initial thoughts of how you were thinking about having to develop this and how it actually came out at the end. Yeah, that's it. Those are, those are, that's a, it was a great adventure. Um, we started about two years ago um, and really started with that conversation initially. Um, um, the folks from CITC brought uh, a portion of our development team up into Anchorage and we got to spend time with um, Alaska Native Elders, youth, well, so storytellers. Studio in the air, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, um, and, and we, that, that initial time was really so valuable to us because we learned first and foremost that um, uh, in order to produce this in an appropriate way, we would need to do it very inclusively, meaning we couldn't just go back to the office, make a game, pitch the milestones across and get approval. This was something that we'd have to partner with deeply, creative partnerships with, with folks, uh, elders, yeah. artists, storytellers, all along the way. And so that's been a, a real joy as a game developer to be able to work with folks outside of the game industry to create a game. And in the process, we've learned so much. Um, I have to admit, before I started this project, my view of Alaska Native culture was very stereotypical. And, and a, a lot of from movies and television, igloos and, yeah. you know, parkas and things like that. Eskimo, typical Eskimo. Typical, right, like exactly. And, and as we dug deeper, we, we understood how rich it was and how much we could learn uh, as a modern uh, culture and Western culture, how much we could learn about um, how to live life, um, how to, how to uh, really find uh, the beauty in the world. And, and so we worked in trying to translate that into the game's themes. So the game itself, it's, we call it an atmospheric puzzle platformer. Um, it's a, a side-scrolling game in the traditional like sense. A yeah, <laughs> atmospheric in, in terms of the look. Um, it's very moody and, and re relaxing to play. Uh, it stars a, an Inupiaq girl uh, named Nuna and uh, her unlikely companion, an Arctic fox. And each of the two characters have unique skills and abilities and they have to work together to overcome uh, challenges and obstacles. And they're set in the harshest environment on Earth, uh, in the Arctic, um, and they, tra they uh, you know, travel over the tundras, ice flows, um, remote villages, um, and 
the characters they meet and the situations that they encounter are all inspired from um, kind of a mosaic of um, Inupiaq folklore that we learned over so, time. So what's the, what's the goal? Where, where are they getting to? So uh, in the Canuck Sayuka story, um, uh, the protagonist's village is... Um, uh, life has become very harsh because of the changing climate. Uh, an eternal blizzard has come, and, it, and, it, and they don't know what to do. And it takes uh, the young protagonist. She, she goes out into the world to find out the source of the blizzard. And so the game has her traveling across the landscape, um, eventually finding the source. Um, and it's a mythical creature called the Blizzard Man. And he, she has to figure out a way to, um, to balance nature and restore, restore uh, health to her community. Wow! Yeah, that's a great story. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and and the and you know, uh, puzzle platformer games are the perfect vehicle. It's a it's a really great genre of games for storytelling. Number one, uh, two, it's it's an easy game for new players to pick up or casual players to pick up. Mm -hmm. But folks that have been around who play games all the time who love this style of game, it's a really deep uh, deep uh, gameplay. Um, so we see an opportunity for hardcore gamers to play with their casual gaming friends okay. or siblings or or um, you know, parents or grandparents. It's a it's a cool connective uh, type of game. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, now, what uh, what platform is this? Is it on console right now, or yeah. are you planning on uh, migrating it to the mobile space, or where are we going with this? Yeah. So the initial release in the fall of this year is for uh, PC. So it'll be released on Steam, Xbox One, and PS4. So next generation consoles yeah, and sure. and PC. So we built the the game on Unity. That's a it's a game engine yeah. that allows for portability, um, and we have uh, plans in the future to release on new platforms. So we're already working on concepts on how we can extend send it out. Wow. Wow. So, uh, you know, you guys could talk about this next. I want to talk about, you know, um, when I looked at the, the, the trailers and everything, it, yeah. it really kind of gave me a kind of like Disney animation feel. I mean, I, 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 you know, Disney has a way of actually creating, like you're saying, this environment which is very relaxing, yeah. uh, but fun to look at, fun yeah. to interact with, right? Yeah. So, so it, it, you know, I got to ask you guys, do you see in the future this kind of maybe a transmedia play of like getting into maybe even making this a short or something like that, short animation or something like that? Yeah, I think, you know, this is really, uh, for us, this is really a first step. Um, but, um, you know, based on the response so far, um, which has been overwhelmingly positive, we feel like uh, audiences are hungry for this style of game. They want to explore world culture through, through different kinds of media. And a game like this with the strong characters and strong setting in the world really could transcend uh, games. And, and so we've got a lot of interesting ideas, and, and we're going to be looking for, for how this does and then hopefully have that opportunity to do lots of stuff in the future. Okay. Well, we'll close off this interview, and um, you know, God, uh, thank you so much. Do you guys yeah. want to have any closing remarks for the audience uh, to talk about, Amy? Or yeah. yeah, I'd like to just one of the things I'd like to emphasize is the number one priority with this game is to have fun. And so, even though this is sharing the Nupiaq culture and stories and values, that's our first priority. But really, once you have fun, it's an invitation to find out more about the Nupiaq culture and also to spur ideas about how other cultures can do this type of project. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so anyway, we'll close on the interview. But how, how, do, how it's coming out in fall yes. right, of uh, this year, and it'll be released on consoles, as yeah, you said, the popular see, consoles. Yeah. Um, so how can people find out more about this uh, in the meantime? Sure. Um, you can visit neveralonegame.com. Uh, we've got uh, trailers and other uh, media there, that uh, sh screenshots and other inspirational art that uh, helped us to form the game. And, and so uh, check out neveralonegame.com. All right. We'll close this off. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, this is Greg Laurie, a.k.a. Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Soccer Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful out there.